Have you ever had your Azure Virtual Desktop or Windows 365 session freeze, disconnect or crawl to a halt, right when you're in the middle of doing something important? You're not the only one. And Microsoft has finally done something about it. So welcome to RDP Multipath. Just released into public preview, and it's one of the biggest performance upgrades for Azure Virtual Desktop or Windows 365 in years. RDP Multipath lets your session use multiple network paths at the same time. It automatically balances the traffic, and if one path fails, your session keeps going. No dropouts, no disconnections, no stress. Think of it like turning a narrow road into a smart multi-lane highway if you're AVD Windows 365 traffic. Smoother, faster, and way more reliable. In this video, I'm going to walk you through what RDP Multipath does, how to enable it, and then we'll show you a live demo. You can see the difference for yourself. If you're serious about delivering a rock solid AVD and Windows 365 experience for users, then this is the update that you did know that you needed. Let's dive in and have a look at it. Let's take a look at it and see what it is. And then we'll go through the prereqs and then go into a demo. I can show you a host pool without it enabled, a host pool with it enabled. And then what we're going to do, we're actually going to disable one of the NICs and then see the behavior differences. And you can see what's actually happening in the background. All right, let's go to it. What is RDP Multipath? RDP Multipath is essentially a backup network route. Normally, when you do a connection via UDP, you have a UDP connection to a stunt server. If it happens to that network route to that stunt server, your session can drop. What this enables us to do, it enables us to essentially create multiple active paths to that stunt server or the turn server, right? And what that means is say there's an issue with, I don't know, one of your firewalls or the routing within your network, it will continue to work. Okay, and that happens seamlessly. We'll show you how that works shortly. This is the diagram from Microsoft on the Microsoft documentation website. You can see here, we have these multiple paths that it's now using. Historically, we just had one single path. Now we've got multiple network paths that we can use to go through either the turn server or the stun server, okay? I'm not gonna go to the differences between those on this video. Maybe I'll do a separate video on that. All you need to know is that we can now have multiple UDP paths to a turn server or a stun server, okay? And the key thing here is this is only available on UDP. So if you use TCP for RDP short path, you're out of luck for now. And maybe in the future, it will support that. But for now, it only supports UDP over RDP short path. Okay. All right. Let's have a look to see what we actually need to get this working. First of all, your host pool must be set in validation environment. We'll look into that in a minute. I'll show you how to do that. So that's a prereq because this is in public preview right? It's not GA yet. For now, you have to use validation mode for your host book. We need to ensure that RDP short path is configured as a primary transport approach. So we can show you how to do that as well, either the Nerdia console or the, the normal console, the Azure Virtual Desktop console. And also the latest Windows app version must be available. So you must be minimum 2.0.366.0 or either the remote desktop client version 1.26074 or later. As long as you've got all those pre-works in place you should be good to use and test this i'll show you how to check whether you've got those pre-works in place but then if not you can configure them and then hopefully you can test this out in your own environment the first thing we need to do we need to check the machines actually in a validation host port to do this we head over to the azure portal and then the properties of the host port you see we have this thing here called the validation environment that needs to be turned on Validation environment essentially means you get all the latest features. So you get the latest be the agent deployed to your session host. So normally we set validation environments for like test host pools and UAT. Wouldn't normally recommend doing it for production host pools. There has been a few instances where some of my customers have had agents pushed out, which caused issues. So be careful about this. This is a public preview, right? So definitely wouldn't recommend in deploying it in a mission critical environment just now. i um, just test it a bit first. So. That's how you set it within the validation environment in the nature portal and within here as well. So if I go to the properties and then go to AVD and then validation environment, you've got that set there as well. Okay. So that's how we do the validation environment. The next thing we need to make sure is we're using the host pools for RDP short path. If we go to networking and then to RDP short path, this ensures that we're going to use UDP. So we can have RDP short path for managed networks, RDP short path for managed networks done an RDP short path for public network. So I'm on the public network, so I've just set this to enable. By default, it should enable anyway. You can also do it via turn relay. It will drop back to turn relay if you can't contact the stunt service. That's how we configure that to make sure that's configured. If we go into the Nerdio console, we can see how we set that there. If I go to 
I'll do the settings. You can see it's got those exact same settings here as well. I can enable the RDP settings from there. Okay. We have enabled the validation. We've got RDP short path turned on. Just need to make sure you're running the latest Windows app client. If I go onto my client here, you can see it's my Windows app client. To get the version, we just go to settings and then make sure the app version. So we're at 2.0.50.0. Okay. We need to make sure that's the very latest version. All right. So that's the prereqs in place. Now I'm going to show you what the experience looks like. We're going to go and test this. So I'm going to connect to a host pool without it enabled. And then we're going to disable one of the NICs. Hopefully we'll see the network drop. And then we're going to rerun that test on a host pool, which has got RDP multipath enabled. And I'll show you what to look for. We'll show you what that looks like from a user perspective. All right, let's go and do that now. So now we're going to go test this. I'm logged onto a machine, which I'll show you now. I've basically got a Hyper-V machine running and I've got two network cards installed, right? So I'm doing this basically just to simulate a network dropout from a different network path. So what I'm going to do now is connect to a non RDP from multipath enabled session host. So this is just a normal session host with UDP enabled. We're going to connect to that. Then I'm going to disable one of the network cards so you can see what happened to that session. All right. So we're going to connect to this defender test. I'm logged on to a desktop called defender test. We just look here. Go to connect the information and you can see here I'm using UDP, right? So if we go down here, I can see I'm just using transport protocol, it says UDP, and I've got a round trip time of 9 milliseconds and a bandwidth of 140 megabits a second. All right, so what I'm going to do now is disable the NICs to mimic a network failure. So I'm just going to go ahead and disable this one. Click disable. Okay, so that NIC is now disabled. I'm going to go to the desktop. That's my normal connection and I can see I'm okay there, right? So we're good there. So just get enable that NIC and then I'm just now going to enable this other NIC. Okay. Click disable. Okay. So now I'm not getting any response. My network has the face is dropped. I can't connect. And in a second you'll see I'm waiting for the network to restore. So it's now having to work out a different path to that traffic to enable me to reconnect to that box. From a user perspective, I'm minimally will do my work. When that session's dropped, I'm not a happy bunny. Okay. So now you can see I'm back. If I just enable that again, I can see I've got my connection. And if I disable that, it's going to drop again. See, I've dropped again. This is behavior you'd see before we had RDP multipath. Now let's go see the behavior that we get with RDP multipath enabled. Okay. So let's see what this looks like when we have the RDP multipath enabled. I'm just going to connect to my validation host. Okay. So we're now connected and we go to our connection information and we can see we're now using multipath UDP. All right. So now I'm going to disable one of the network connections. We're currently using this one. All right. So I'm just going to flick this to enabled. Okay. So we now have two network connections running and you can see here there is no interruption to the network. So I can still click on any of those. I just open now to show us interacting with the virtual machine. So that's all good. Now we're going to go and simulate a network dropout connection on the second net. So I'm just going to go and click disable. Okay. We're going to see that I can't click anywhere. So I'm just waiting for the network connection to restore. Okay. And then it's going to reconnect automatically to my session using the other connection. So I managed to automatically find the network path and reconnect it back to the session again. So I'm just going to click enable for that again. Okay. So now enable the other connection. So we now have the other connection available and then I'm just going to go and disable this connection. Okay. That's disabled. And again, it's going to automatically detect that it can see the connection and then we'll wait for this connection to restore as well. And there you go. I'm back in my session. So it's a lot more seamless than the previous experience, a lot faster because it's able to automatically adjust to its network paths a lot better. So yeah, David, that's RDP multipath. Definitely a big improvement over the way it worked previously. Looking forward to seeing this more in production environments. Obviously at the moment it's in public preview, but definitely 
have a play with it in their test validation pool to see how it works in your environment. So that's it from this week. Please subscribe if you like this kind of video. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.